The government announced in March that it intends to create a new deputy chairperson role at ASIC. The move is linked to the regulator being granted greater flexibility to manage the breadth of its new powers, which include advancing competition in Australian financial services. Minister for Revenue and Financial Services Kelly O'Dwyer said the new role would bring ASIC into line with the structure of the ACCC. The government intends to introduce the necessary legislation in the coming weeks. O'Dwyer also announced the reappointments of present Deputy Chair Peter Kell for a further one-year period from 6 May 2018 up to and including 5 May 2019, and Commissioner John Price for a further two-year period from 21 March 2018 up to and including 20 March 2020. Former Goldman Sachs banker James Shipton took over as ASIC chairman in February after Greg Medcraft retired in November last year. The CBA has responded to the amended statement of claim filed by Austrac on 14 December last year. Australia's largest bank denied the majority of the 100 additional allegations relating to the regulator's ongoing investigation. Austrac now alleges over 53,800 contraventions of the Anti-Money Laundering and Counter-Terrorism Financing Act of 2006 over a six-year period. During the period covered by Austrac's claim and to the end of 2017, CBA said it had submitted more than 19 million reports to Austrac, including over 4 million last year alone. During the same period, we submitted more than 40,000 suspicious matter reports We also fulfilled more than 20,000 requests for assistance from law enforcement agencies last year, CBA stated. Of the 100 additional allegations in Austrac's amended statement of claim, CBA denies 89 allegations in full and admits 11 allegations in part. In March, ASIC released its latest report on market integrity for the period 1 July to 31 December 2017. The report covers the regulator's work to help ensure Australia's financial markets operate fairly and efficiently. Key outcomes during the six-month period included one person jailed, four enforceable undertakings, four people disqualified from providing financial services, and 10 infringement notices issued. The update detailed ASIC's focus on cyber resilience, client money, and sell-side research. It also looks at some of the regulator's key activities over the last six months in areas such as financial benchmarks, continuous disclosure, and binary options. ASIC Commissioner Cathy Armour said ASIC remained committed to setting standards and educating stakeholders, pursuing behavioral change, and taking enforcement action to disrupt market misconduct. Ongoing priorities and areas of focus for ASIC's market integrity work in 2018 include technology and cyber resilience, conduct, and effective capital markets. The Royal Commission into Misconduct in the Banking, Superannuation, and Financial Services Industry held its first round of public hearings in Melbourne from Tuesday 13 March to Friday 23 March. The initial round of hearings focused on consumer lending practices within the context of credit products, such as home loans, car loans, and credit cards, with representatives of the four major banks in the spotlight. The second round of hearings will focus on the financial planning and wealth management industries. It begins on 16 April. APRA in March announced that it had granted approval to ING Bank to begin using internal models to determine its regulatory capital requirements for credit and market risk, commencing from the quarter ended 30 June 2018. ING is the first authorized deposit-taking institution, or ADI, to be accredited since APRA revised the accreditation process in 2015. Consistent with suggestions from the 2014 Financial System Inquiry, APRA's changes are intended to make the process more accessible for ADIs to achieve accreditation, without weakening the overall standards that advanced accreditation requires. APRA said it would continue to engage with other ADIs seeking accreditation to use internal models for calculating regulatory capital requirements. The RBA board decided to leave the cash rate unchanged at 1.5% at its March meeting. In a statement, the RBA said its central forecast is for the Australian economy to grow faster in 2018 than it did in 2017. Business conditions are positive and non-mining business investment is increasing while higher levels of public infrastructure investment are also supporting the economy. The RBA added that further growth in exports is expected after temporary weakness at the end of 2017. However, one continuing source of uncertainty is the outlook for household consumption. Household incomes are growing slowly and debt levels are high.